Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, we see more images of Studio Cell's Unicron. Flame Toys shows off a beautiful IDW Megatron, and we find out how COVID-19 is going to affect Hasbro. Today is Wednesday, March 18th, 2020, and this is episode 373 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that always washes its hands before and after going to the bathroom. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How are you doing? Great. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. How you going? Let's talk Transformers. How you going? (laughs) Swear to God, this is the most disappointing part of any show. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> I've said it before. Move along. It's still weird. <laughs> You're weird. Canadians, does, is that a phrase up, up north? You're weird. Or is that just Daryl? You're weird. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we've got a special guest this week. Um, he was coming on to promote uh, some merch he was selling at TFCon. Uh, sadly, TFCon is not happening anymore, but we still want him on here because he's a big friend of the show, a big supporter. Welcome, Jimmers of Distortion Productions. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to be on. It's good to be back. I have such a crush on you. What's that? <laughs> I have such a crush on you. Uh, all right. That's all right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> that's the response. Right? That's, that's the proper response. <laughs> that's the proper response to lead me on until next year. Uh, well, you know, we, uh, we'll have plenty of time, I hope. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope. So, uh, Jimmers, uh, how you doing? Doing okay, in in light of you, uh, you know everything else <laughs> that's going on in the world. But yeah. uh, it is a bummer because I I was looking forward to seeing uh, Yoshi down in uh, Orlando and and you know a couple of the other guys that normally frequent these events. But you know, it's it's kind of hard to believe the elephant in the room uh, situation that's going on. But uh, all in all. Um, you know, I feel like it it could be a lot worse. So um, I'm doing okay, and I, I hope you guys are as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a, we hope this is. I mean, it, it seems like these are these are pretty extreme times, but hopefully, all you know, the the old saying is a an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So yeah, I don't know. These are we've got we've got a lot of prevention going on. So hopefully, this means we you know things don't don't get you know, as bad as they could get, you know, what we're seeing in, in places like China and Italy. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so Jimbers, you were, I mean, we, we've had you on the show lots of times before we've, you know, we've, we've, uh, talked a lot about respect the prime. Uh, you've got the vinyl edition that you, you, uh, put out last year and you were continuing to sell it, uh, online at distortion productions and, uh, at TFCon last year, and you were going to sell it uh, next week, you know, or this week at TFCon. Tell everyone what Respect the Prime, remind everyone what Respect the Prime is and, and you know, what it's, uh, what it, what you're selling. Well, um, Respect the Prime is the um, Transformers 1986, uh, the movie soundtrack, uh, completely redone and reworked from uh, bands from all over the world for cancer research. Uh, last year we put it out on vinyl previously it had been uh, a cd with uh, 19 tracks if you got the convention edition with the nick roche art uh, that had 19 tracks on it the vinyl because of the playtime of vinyl you get 22 minutes aside so uh, we could only fit 12 of the tracks on there so it but it is essentially like the whole soundtrack and a couple of the score tracks from vince decola uh covered by uh bands from everywhere uh of the electronic uh industrial sort of uh, harder darker music kind of vibe and uh orlando was actually going to be the first time i ever vended down there i really hope they consider uh having it uh there in the fall like as sort of a reschedule because that would have been an uh, you know a completely new crowd of people 
to sort of uh, pitch to. Not that I don't love, you know, Chicago and D.C. and Toronto, the ones, you know, the cities that it usually takes place in. Like, everyone is, is just wonderful then, and, and, and the the compilation itself, the Respect the Prime, usually gets very well received in, in all of those cities. So I was looking forward to, you know, meeting a lot of new people. But, um, I, I mean, hey, you know, things happen that are beyond anyone's control, and uh, I'm just... Uh, I hope everyone makes it out of this okay, and um, you know. But uh, uh, as far as the the record goes, yeah, we have uh, we still have about a hundred of each uh, color. Uh, we did a, a purple for Decepticons uh, and a red for Autobots um, vinyl. Um, so that all of that is still available at DistortionProd.com uh, for anyone who was looking to to pick one up. You can always mail order, and I usually get orders out the next day. So um, it's a, a, a great purchase. It's a great album. Still our best-selling record of uh, all time for a whole label catalog. So, yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, we're always happy to have you on. And yeah, and... See you later. <laughs> 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 oh I, I all miss, right let's go into the rest of the show i miss that <laughs> the canadian uh, is the meanest one i miss i miss that giddy canadian <laughs> hopefully i'll get to see you this summer i you think better. you still have a con you still have a comic for me yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i do i do <laughs> yeah i got a metal a metal covered comic for you yes yes yeah it's a it's going up in value while it sits here it's i mean I, I'll, I'll hold on to it for longer if you need me to it's just <laughs> 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 all right well let's uh, let's get into the show uh we always uh, like to thank our donatrions of which jimmers is one uh and uh you know thank you guys for continuing to support the show uh you if you are not already a donatrion you can become one at transmissionspodcast.com slash support but for all of our donatrions who are already uh, supporting the show jeremy you've you've got something uh, something coming very soon right I do, and um, if you watch Trips to the Store this week, you will get to see what everyone that is uh, at the $5 level as of the beginning of this month will be getting something special in the mail. Part of it is kind of to make up for the fact that we have been lax in sending things out, but I've got some awesome holographic stickers from Sticker Mule with our, our Tape Man design, bad guy logo that... Daryl came up with and K Girl made look good. And then a new uh, logo that I came up with based off of the like uh, early 2000s Transformers logo, like the original RID or Armada. And um, got stickers for those and then a coaster. Those, by the time this episode airs, they will be in the hands of the post office, assuming they don't close the post office. <laughs> well, let's hope so. <laughs> This just in, they close the post office. <laughs> oh man! Well, it is Sunday right now, Daryl. They it's usually closed. Oh, that's true. They may not have. They may not have closed the post office. <laughs> Jeremy, you're going to be sure to lick every uh, every <laughs> item you send off before you put uh, it. I in am the going mail, to right? use a damp paper towel. <laughs> I, I I will trust me. There there will be no contamination. Not that I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so all our Donatrians, hope you look forward to that. Also, uh, want to remind you that Empire of Rust, episode 19, How Low Does the Metal Boat Go, uh, just was released this Monday, March 16th. So, or March, yeah, March 16th. It should already be in your uh, podcast feed. If you haven't uh, gotten it or you're not listening to Empire of Rust, you can go to transmissionspodcast.com slash rust, and you can check that out. Another little Donatrion bonus we have this week is a special side story from Empire of Rust, and that's going in the uh, Donatrion-only feed. So you, if you're not a Donatrion, you won't get to listen to this. Uh, it's exclusive uh, to Donatrions, and it features myself and Jeremy as new characters in the world of Empire of Rust. So this is uh, a little story. It's not connected to the main story, so we don't interact with any of the main characters. Uh, but we have our own little adventure, and it does feature uh, one of the players from Empire of Rust, Adam Echu, 
uh, but he is not playing his uh, his regular character sweet spot. He's playing a new character, uh, Professor Sprocket. Uh, so he's got a completely different voice, uh, and uh, and it was a fun little adventure. So it's it's going to be a, a three part story, and the first part is going up this week, and the next two parts uh, will go up the following in the following two weeks. So I hope you enjoy that. It was a lot of fun. My yeah. second time playing in our. <laughs> As another reason to become a Transmissions Donatrion. All right, so uh, let's talk about some toy news. All right, and first up this week, uh, I'm just going to... It was a bit of a slow week, so I'm just going to keep the ball rolling with what I was talking about last week. And that is uh, 01 Studios' cell figure. And a whole bunch of new pictures popped up this week, and I have linked the... um, the picture set from Dime Chalk's page, and these are really nice pictures. It uh, it it's very reminiscent of the old glamour shots style, very kind of fuzzy. They're very pretty pictures, making it look uh, really nice. Um, uh, and yeah, you get a lot of pictures here of how the figure looks, um, both sides, front and back. And yeah, it's a, a a couple more of him in his alt mode as well. Um, I'm really enjoying the uh, the planet with arms. Uh, that's that's kind of fun. So uh, yeah, it's they're really doing a good job of kind of you know making fun of the fact that this is a character that's not Unicron because it has no head, but it's very clearly Unicron. So yeah, there is a uh, another site that I did come across this week uh, that is taking pre-orders. That was uh, TF Direct. And uh, you can go there and, and pre-order it if you want. It's a little bit more expensive than uh, uh, Show Z Store. Uh, they have, uh, I think Show Z Store was only uh, $3 or something like that for the pre-order. Uh, TF Direct is, what is it, uh, 20 bucks or something like that was the, uh, the pre-order. So either way, it's a place to pre-order the figure if you're interested. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, Jimmers, what uh, what are your thoughts on this guy? I think this is uh, maybe the first time we've had a chance to ask you about it. This is the uh, the formerly Zeta Toys, what are they calling him, Starcore, and they have now since renamed him uh, uh, Cell from Zero or O One Studios, and uh, he's headless. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on here. (laughs) (laughs) This, I mean, what is this supposed to be? A Unicron without a head that's, I mean, he's got sort of a head there. I mean, he's got like a collar. He comes with a head. Yeah, he does. He comes with the head. It's just they're, the pictures they're showing don't include the head because the inclusion of the head constitutes a, uh, uh, a trademark infraction so oh, okay. they are basically throwing a little bit of a uh, like a joke at the uh the litigation that happened prior to and saying hey look we got this figure here that's definitely not unicron because it has no head um and uh and that's the kind of joke here they were trying to put this out while the hascon yes. oh okay uh, so, crowdfunding was going so this on. is essentially a third party unicron yes but they're they're not including the head the head is included you're saying it is yeah yeah all the stuff to make him look like unicron is is included yeah okay i mean he it looks pretty good what's the price point is it going to be like around the ballpark of what the the haslab one was no it's about half actually from what we can tell uh, from last week's discussion it's about 300 bucks okay and how about size on this thing i mean by uh, the pictures, i believe we it's... said 17 inches okay um I mean, I I was one of the nut jobs that bought into the Haslab Unicron. Uh, Damn! I have right. about a hundred bucks of him to pay off still, okay. <laughs> so he's almost paid off. But uh, uh, I did buy into that, um, so I couldn't think of anything. I I couldn't commit to anything else other than that. So this, you know, I'm happy. I'm I'll just stick with mine. I mean, but this is looks like a good alternative to to that if it's going to be like less or there are there and is there anywhere to like find pictures of the head oh yeah yeah there's uh the uh existing uh pictures from when it was um the zeta toys figure are out there and uh you can definitely see those uh on uh, online there the shows each store yes had uh, if 
if you can. I don't have it up right link. now, but we can definitely pull it up. It's in the show notes for last right. week. So, yeah, we can definitely bring those up again. But it's got all the pictures of when it was uh, the, 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 the Zeta Toys prototype. I mean, it is, it's cool. I, I think it's well done. It's a, a great looking sculpt. And, uh, you know, I guess it, it almost reminds me a little bit of like um, the Marvel, the old Marvel comics version of him. Yeah. Uh, you know, except without the, he doesn't have like the wings, you know, the, like, uh, whatever you call those, like that he usually has, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I could see this like sort of fitting in like more of a, a G1 sort of, or, or like the Marvel kind of style, but it's cool. I like it. Yoshi, you weren't uh, here with us last week when we discussed this. What are your thoughts on, uh, on this one here? I vaguely remember when this guy first popped up that I was all for him. Mm-hmm. But it seems now when I see the 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 different options that they've had on his shoulders, like it's been such a huge turnoff to me. I mean, the the ones that they're showing here are these other mouths and stuff, and then the the trumpets and whatever that they've got here. I mean, it's just right. the pictures of these are just the accessories that they're able to just kind of stick stick to them, just because they can. But it's it's more of a mm-hmm. goof for the pictures just to show them on here, right? I see. Because the uh, they're not showing him with the with the wings, and they're obviously not showing him with the head. But these other mouths and stuff kind of are accessory pieces for the planet mode, and then the trumpet bits are stuff to kind of you know show that you know they attach the mouth, but they also serve as a stand in planet mode. So they're they're showing those off as well. And they're, I mean, these pictures are almost just a goof to you know to 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 kind of say, hey, we've got this thing, it's existing, um, but it's not Unicron that we're making. It's it's something completely different. And and it, I mean, I think it's kind of fun. Well, the thing about this not Unicron that I find appealing is just looking at the chest and the legs, how faithful it is to Unicron. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I, there's a lot I like about it and a lot that I just ha- – you clearly are filling me in because I haven't been paying attention that, that I now understand. But the price point of the HasLab one was ridiculous because I'm not a triple doctorate. <laughs> but I'm I'm interested in this. I, I really am. I, I want to see more pictures of it because I would like to have a Unicron on my shelves. Yeah. I mean, there's so. there's no shortage of pictures out there right now. Uh, like uh-huh. uh, Jeremy said, he's attached the uh, the the show Z store link from last week. And it's got all the uh, prototype images from when it was uh, Zeta toys. And that's a, a lot of really cool pictures in there of what it will actually look like completed. I mean, there's a couple of pictures in there that are uh, digibashed, but the, what we're seeing right now is actually more uh, of the, the the final color scheme. So that's uh, that's you know the colors that you're gonna want to you know you know put on it. But yeah, just uh, kind of transplant the head from the the Zeta Toys prototypes to that. Gotcha. The yeah. arm speakers are a little weird <laughs> with all of the the uh, things that look like speakers that are like attached to his arms. Hmm. That's the stand. Yeah, those are the pieces oh. that come off. Yeah. Okay. Take a look at the uh, in the chat there, the the, the Donatrion's chat. Uh, there's a picture there for the link that Jeremy put in, and you'll see one of the pro- prototype images there. Okay. Yeah. Man, that is tempting. Now that I'm seeing all the pictures, that is super damn tempting. Yeah, it's really quite cool, and I you know, and and we talked about it at the time, but I can totally see why Has Hasbro you know, kibosh this because it was just, you know, it was inflicting on their, their, you know, crowdfund at the time. But, you know, this thing is, it's going ahead right now and it's, there's no news as opposing to it. So it's going to be interesting to see if it, if it goes ahead. Oh, that does look mm-hmm. fantastic. The wings are on here too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That looks much better than the, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I know you guys probably already talked about it though, but I, I'm all about uh, the the Toy Fair reveals that that came out a week ago. Um, all you know, so many characters that I wanted to that I've wanted for a long time uh, are coming out. So um, mm-hmm. just just wanted to get my two cents in there. <laughs> mm. Cool, right on. And Charles and Jeremy, I know we talked about it last week, so I won't bug you about it. But I'll just uh, hand it off to uh, you, Jeremy. And uh... what? I, oh, I wasn't oh, here you, last week. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, 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 remember it was just, oh, it was just you, know, you and me. The A-team to, that's you right. And me. We just we did this on our own. Yeah, that's right. So I guess I'll ask you, Charles, 
you know, you want to talk about this? I know that you backed, you know, the HasLab one. So, I mean, I'm sure you're going to tear this to shreds and say it's a you know, it's a piece of shit and you don't want it. But, <laughs> but why don't, why don't you tell me? i money down on he bought this one too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he needs one to stay in the box. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not buy this one, but it, the robot mode definitely looks great. I mean, the, the fact that they are able to hide all the... Uh, spherical panels away in robot mode. I mean, that's something that has the HasLab one couldn't do. But I will say that I do prefer the planet mode of the HasLab one to this one. I think the 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 mouth on the planet looks better on the HasLab version than this sure. one. But I de- I definitely think the robot mode for this one is uh, is cleaner and and more faithful mm-hmm. to the G one eighty six movie. So you're getting both, and you're going to display the, Has- <laughs> the Hasbro one and the planet. Just in uh, no, <laughs> the Haslab one. I'm already. I still have to figure out where I'm going to put that thing. So uh, that's that's enough. Uh, you Make know, your I, kids I've... share one bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is he going to do with the other seven bedrooms? <laughs> you got you guys think I have a lot more money than I actually do. <laughs> well, how big is your TV again? <laughs> I had a lot of Best Buy coupons. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. Jeremy, you got something to talk about, right? <laughs> I, I still like I like you know mess with Yeah, you. this is a good this is a Charles <laughs> Bash session. I I can get in on this. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the virus stuff. Mainly just uh, Hasbro has closed all of their offices worldwide uh, until at least April 1st. Uh, They say that as of the time that this was reported on March 14th, that no one had tested positive inside the company. This is just a precautionary measure. I believe that they have now, like, said stuff about, like, People that whose jobs do allow for remote working are going to be doing that. And uh, as someone that has been working remotely for five years, it, it's a big adjustment at first. So let's, let's if you're waiting for Hasbro news and you don't get it for a few weeks, it, everyone's going to be stir crazy. Anyway. Somebody still be there manning the uh, customer service phone calls when I, you know, when I buy a figure from the store and it comes missing a gun? Probably not. It's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and then also related to this, 3.0 has announced because of the, the virus, there's going to be a delay in their shipping, particularly the uh, the Bumblebee uh, Bumblebee movie Deluxe Nemesis Optimus Prime and the Bumblebee movie Bumblebee figure, um, which were both um, supposed to be out in the first quarter, are now both postponed to June 2020. You know, that sucks for the people that are getting this. I'm wondering if we would see these at TFCon Toronto, assuming things are better by then, because three zero usually shows up at, at TFCon. That's all I have to talk about, and I imagine we don't really want to dwell on uh, the pandemic any longer. So, um, Yoshi, what do you got? Well, Jeremy, my friend, I have some more pictures of Earthrise Skylinks, a figure that if I see it on the store shelves, I will pick it up. Because it's gorgeous. It's also sporting a new like uh, rocket base mode I've never seen before. Yeah, they're they're really getting their like their money's worth out of these like the ramps and everything. And I love that he can connect. Yeah, this is this is. I mean, I I wasn't aware of this uh, particular mode before before today. Were you, Daryl? Oh yeah, yeah. This was one of the modes they showed off at uh, Toy Fair. This just adds to the value of this particular figure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, there will be no hesitation at the eighty dollar price tag at Target for me. Why is Starscream photobombing the <laughs> picture? Because he can. Because that's what Starscream do. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I think you missed out. There was a a brief period where I think it was Walmart had pre orders for like. Mm-hmm. Um, 30 bucks or 35 something like that. Yeah, they were on sale. It's pretty. It's pretty looking. You going to get one to go with your Unicron, Charles? Uh probably not. Um I mean it, it is a great figure, but uh I'm I'm shying away from the bigger figures these days with, you know, <laughs> got to got to have that space for Unicron. Just take one car out of the garage and <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean you'll still have four in there. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean this this sky this sky links is is really nice. So uh you know, I I I feel like it, you know, all these figures they you know, they 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 give you um you know, you just you just want them. They give you desire, but then I feel like when when I get them, I play with them for a second and then you know, that's it. So Well, we're adults now. I mean, we collect, yeah. we don't play. I mean, that's that's the thing. I I feel like I I I should uh I shouldn't bother with collecting new stuff since uh, you know, and and I'm but I'm also not really into collecting the vintage stuff so maybe i'm not a collector maybe i uh, maybe i don't know the fan <laughs> yeah clearly i am <laughs> what is it you want from the, from the uh the brand charles i don't maybe i just maybe i just want to live next to someone who has a big collection <laughs> and they let me play with their stuff charles you want to come over uh, and play with my toys <laughs> charles you can always come over and play with my toys gross i appreciate that jimmers <laughs> Does that mean you're adding this to your collection, Jimmers? Uh, yes, I absolutely did pre-order this guy. Uh, in fact, most of the things revealed at Toy Fair. I've been waiting for that Scorpinox since I was 10 years old. That is the figure I've always wanted them to do. And we're finally getting him. And uh, we're even getting the little the little guy that came with him um, as a separate deluxe figure. That Fast Track we're getting. I just, you know, Snapdragon, Double Dealer. Like, those are characters that I, I loved when I was a kid, so I'm glad we're finally getting them. And you can kick all their asses with your Skylinks figure. Well, no, they'll all gang up on him, <laughs> or or, oh, or they'll ride him to wherever, you know, Bow, chicka, they, wow, need, wow. they need to go. No, it's, it's, not, it's not a sex thing. It's, <laughs> it's always a sex thing with you. That's true. It's tr- <laughs> that's true. It is. But yes, I, I will be getting one. Jeremy's getting one. I am. I pre-ordered it and I checked. It was like forty nine ninety nine was the pre-order that Walmart had. With like thirty bucks off, I couldn't say no. Damn, I got mine on Pulse for the regular ass retail. Lucky. Just another reason Pulse screws the fan. And and Daryl, is there anything in the Earthrise line you're not getting? Uh, the MicroMasters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, he's already got all of them. <laughs> most of them. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm 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 looking forward to uh, pretty much all of this stuff. It's all looking really good. But the uh, yeah, the Skylinks is is looking awesome for sure. All right, well that's it, Charles. Why don't you close us out? The Flame Toys Kuro Karakuri IDW Megatron. So Bless this you. is <laughs> this is a very uh, cool design. This is uh, Don Figueroa's uh, Stealth Bomber Megatron design. Uh, from the IDW 2009 ongoing. Uh, when we first saw this at Toy Fair, you know, it was kind of like, okay, it's it's uh, Stealth Bomber Megatron, but he's got these weird wings that he didn't have in the comic. But now that we've got this full gallery, he's got a lot of stuff. Like, this is not... They, they really went whole hog on this guy. He's got uh, he's got a fusion cannon, but he's got two fusion cannons that you can put on both arms. They're both removable. He's got a sniper rifle. He's got a pistol that looks like the original gun Megatron. He's got a flail, a really spiky flail. He's got swords. He's super poseable. He's got a, like a little weapon case to carry around all of all his weapons, like he's a you know like he's a sniper, <laughs> an assassin. He does everything except transform, oh. <laughs> but. Damn. This figure is is really cool looking. He's he's very poseable, very flexible, lots of accessories. He's got LED lights. This is uh yeah, this is a super cool figure. Um he's also four hundred dollars. <laughs> so uh <laughs> um yeah. Uh so yeah, this I mean if you if you want if you really like IDW Megatron Stealth Bomber Megatron, I mean we we do have a deluxe figure that came out a few years ago, uh, you know that came with a Spotlight Megatron comic. Uh, so that you know there is a toy of him that exists, but this is, yeah, this is a super hyper detailed, lots of accessories. So this is for the Uber IDW Stealth Bomber Megatron fan. 
Um, so, Jimmers, are you that uber IDW stealth Balmer Megatron? Dude, fan? this is dope. I, I mean, I love it. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, I would even drop the 400 on this guy if he did indeed transform. Uh, and since he doesn't, <laughs> it's a big no. Because this Aww. this design of Megatron is probably, other than the, the G1 version, this is probably my, my second favorite Megatron ever. I love this design. Who Who's at IDW uh, was responsible for this? Uh, Don Figueroa. Yeah, fantastic. Like, I love it. It's it, I, I thought it was great. I I kind of wish he he stuck around in this body for longer. Mm-hmm. And I I have the deluxe figure that Hasbro did uh, a while ago. Did any other third party company do a figure of this guy? Yes. Not that I. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Daryl. Daryl knows I better. Knew, I knew Daryl <laughs> would know. Well, who who else did this? Yeah, I I, I, uh, I seem to. I'm trying to think. I now seem to recall uh, seeing one in one of the display cases at TFCon. Yeah. Once, Shit. but I don't ever remember it uh, coming. Out. Generation toy. Generation. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that was transformable. I, yep. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember its name now. The only but, reason this one is not transformable is because it's officially licensed. Oh, okay. Yes. Gotcha. See, like, it, this seeing this almost makes me want to hunt down the Generation Toy one. Um, I mean, this is just so fantastic. But because he doesn't transform, that's that's a big detractor for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was 150 bucks. It was called Tyrant. Okay. And it's sold out everywhere now. One of the reasons I, I didn't get into those those little, uh, uh, you know, they, they look like vintage Star Wars figures. Have you guys seen those little Transformers on card? Uh, I can't mm-hmm. remember what company did that, but the reason I didn't get into those is because they're, they, they're non-transformable. I mean, they look kind of neat, but uh, but this guy is just unbelievable looking. But I can't I can't pull the trigger. Yeah, I mean, it's also this this design was kind of the reason I think uh, Don Figueroa got out of doing Transformers uh, official Transformers artwork because he had a kind of a little bit of a dispute with Hasbro because they kind of just used his design to make the toy. And, uh, you know, I mean, the the he since he did it, it was a licensed comic and everything. So basically everything you design for a licensed comic is owned by Hasbro since they're the licensor. Uh, but in the past, they had worked with uh, Don Figueroa, the artist, to design their figures. And this time they kind of just, you know, didn't even contact him and, and give him a heads up that they were doing it. So they got, you know, that kind of wasn't Don Figueroa wasn't too happy with that. And I think that that kind of soured the relationship, unfortunately. So, And I would love to see Mastermind do do a version of this guy and have him stand next to my Tarn that uh, that they did. Like I think that would that that pair would go great together. Just looks mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, Daryl, what do you think of, of this uh, this figure? Oh, I agree with uh, Jimmers that it's. Uh, would you say dope? That's it's what the dope. kids say <laughs> these days. <laughs> That's what the kids said thirty years ago when we were kids. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's 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 really good looking. Uh, it's it's really heavily detailed. And I did, I brought up the, uh, I put the link in the show notes or the, the chat for the Generation Toy one. And I mean, it's an, a few years old now by comparison, but uh, it doesn't hold a candle to uh, to this one here. Um, again, it does have to transform, but I mean, the detail on this guy is just next level. Um, and I talked about it when we, well, we first got the pictures for this thing, but the, the deep knee bends that this thing is able to pull off to be able to do like the superhero landing and like the deep crouch. And, uh, it's just like action figures don't pull off these poses. Well, and it's not just that the toe, the toe is bendable. Like it's just like the tiniest little bit of toe there. It's, you know, it's. I, I'm really impressed with the articulation on this. It's just unbelievable. I do not have four hundred dollars to spend on a single figure that doesn't transform. But if I did, I this one would be really close to the top there. It's it's really very good looking. I'm I'm very impressed with this. And I love the design. I have the other one like Jimmer's does. I did get the repro label sticker sheet to kind of give him the purple accents because he really didn't have any before then. Um but uh yeah. I don't 
completely understand the wing pack, but I think they probably had to give it a little bit of extra stuff to kind of, you know, make it worth the 400 bucks. But yeah, everything else here I love. I love it immensely. Yoshi, uh, I know you're you're probably not too familiar with this design for Megatron, but what do you think? I'm not familiar with it at all. And the first thing I thought of is this character is a mind swap between Megatron and War Machine Punisher. It, it just <laughs> it just that's with all the guns and all the accessories this thing comes with like you do not want to cross its path <clears throat> or cut them off or any other <laughs> any other thing that could set the Punisher <laughs> off. And uh Jeremy, you got $400 to spare for this guy? No, I don't. But if I did, I I would consider it. This thing looks amazing. I think when I was talking with the with the rep, oh no, he was saying the Optimus Primal one he had played with, but this thing just it looks so good. Hopefully they'll be at another show whenever the next convention is, and you know people can see it in person. And I, I think if, if I had to describe it as when I was a kid, it would be radical. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's pretty dope, Jeremy. <laughs> Word. <laughs> It's fresh. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's all our toy topics. So we're going to move on to trips to the store. This is where we show off all the cool Transformers stuff we got this week. We do this as a video that you can see on YouTube. So you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. But we also put the audio right here and we will describe everything in loving detail. So you can... Listen as you're driving and check out that YouTube video later. So without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. All right, uh, let's show off some of the stuff we got this week. Uh, Yoshi, you're going to go first. I have one thing to show. Uh, I think it's really important. It, it means a lot to me. You guys know I collect Transformers art. I love it. I love original stuff. I love prints. And since uh, TFCon was not allowed to continue, uh, I have a business card from one Josh Perez. A very awesome, shiny, dope-ass business card. Hey, Charles, there you are. Uh, I kind of want to use this as a reminder that uh, comic book publishers don't really pay well. And these guys thrive on conventions. And it's it's worth noting that... um, they're going to take commissions right now. I've uh, since since the cancellation of TFCon, I've already uh, had two accepted. So um, just think about these guys because they're awesome, and art is awesome, and Transformers art is the most awesome of awesome that you can do on Awesome Mountain. So yeah, I will leave this on the screen so you can write down Mr. Perez's email address because I'm not going to say it. Send send it to me. Well, I guess I already have it, but we have um, we'll be talking about it in convention news, but. If you go to transmissionspodcast.com slash artists, I'm collecting uh, artist commission information and putting it all there in one place. That's sweet. And uh, this, you know, this was given to me at a previous TFCon, so it's a Transformers item, and it also yeah. spreads Is the word. Is that actually metal or just like you know, holographic? It's holographic. It almost seems like it would be a sticker, but it's not. Are your it's... fingernails painted? Yeah, I have a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she needs to practice <laughs> apparently um cool i mean no we did this in prison last week <laughs> we just didn't have the color black next that's a nice buggy got there <laughs> it is i kind of wish it was a left hand or i wish the pictures i would i don't know i think it's a left-handed mug because bumblebee's so prominent but i like the other side out anyways Josh Perez for the win. Go get art. All right, Jimmers, you're up next. I All guess. right, um, I I will also uh, back what Yoshi just put out. Josh is a top guy, and uh, if any of you want to get any commissions, I highly recommend because like this is a very difficult time for artists. Not only losing a convention, but especially if uh, if they can't go to their day jobs or whatever. Um, I'm friends with a lot of musicians and, and people in the, in the entertainment industry and, and they're getting hit really hard. So definitely if, if you find it in your hearts to, to support uh, people in that industry that might be having a bit of a tough time right now, please do. But without further ado, I got a TF source order 
And in that order were these guys, uh, Ratbat and and uh, Rumble. The uh, that's Batty, the little uh, siege two pack, and uh, also these two guys. Uh, any of you guys getting the sea cons? I got my next two sea cons uh, of. Uh, I guess they're real names, like the the names that the the G one names that that the, they were called uh, Sea Wing and Nautilator, but uh, they're the the second two in the uh, in the six that have been released by Takara Tomi. I got these two little dudes. I can't remember their names, but they were also um, part of the Siege line. Two little Decepticons. They were part of the MicroMaster Combiner line in in the G one. Um, but, uh, I dig the colors on these guys too. It's awesome. And last but not least, I completed my DJD Iron Factory set with this giant guy. Giant in terms of Iron Factory. <laughs> but for, for Iron Factory, he's a big dude. But one. this is, uh, uh, the DJD member Tesserus, and he is a heavy duty guy. Very. Very well done. So this completes the DJD for uh, Iron Factory. So I got. To... How sharp is he on the inside? Though? Um, not very at all. In fact, I was kind of hoping there would be some sort of switch that would that would uh, have like a retractable uh, circular saw in there, but no such luck. But yeah, he's not very sharp. It's it's not. Usually, Iron Factory dudes do have some sharp edges on them, but uh, not this guy. But I, I think he, he looks fantastic, and uh, they did a great job on him. Um, so, yeah, I'm just waiting now to get the, the Mastermind versions of these last two big guys to finish off that uh, set for the for the big ones. And that's all I got. Now, Jeremy, we come to you. I have Transformers number 18. Uh, this is this is cover A. I can't remember who did it. Um, but this will be what we're reviewing in all mode this week. I just, I, I just, they give me cover A for whatever, but, um, but I really like this one and it has everything to do with the story, which is nice. I believe it's Umi Meow is the artist. Ah, yeah. Okay. I, I like her stuff. We've, you know, she's one of the new artists and, and I've been impressed with her stuff. No, I also have a uh, galaxy's number five, which <clears throat> I, I didn't make it to the comic book sh- shop when it came out. So I picked it up this week. Uh, Alex Milne cover can't go wrong. I just I love it. Such a good uh, part one of a story. And now uh, for, for the um, the goodies that the Donatrions are going to be getting in the mail, this is, is just a um, a um, coaster. Nothing really special about it. It's just a kind of cardboard coaster from that we had done. And then the, these are what I really like. This is the Tape Man design we have, and these are all holo- holographic um, stickers. So they, they're they just nice and shiny. This is the, the bad guy logo. And then this is the new kind of podcast logo I did. So nice. That's awesome. They, they turned out really good. I'm looking forward to getting them in people's hands. So I will be getting those out in the next day or so. And most people should get them pretty quickly. And then we, we do have a few international people and, I have no idea with everything that's going on. I I have no idea how international mail is going to uh, be affected. That's everything I got. All right. Uh, Daryl. All right. Well, I did get a couple books uh, this week. This is Transformers 18. This is the Umi Mayo uh, cover. Uh, same as Jeremy. But I did spring for the uh, Keizama cover as well. The RI cover. Because it's pretty pretty badass um i do have i do have this comic as well it's lacking a single signature but i do it does have it does have jimmer's signature on it so that's uh that's jimmer's comic this is uh is is uh, electronic savior's comic so yeah gotta get uh emmer's signature on there but uh yeah got that there it just happens to still be on my desk here so i don't remember mm-hmm. i don't forget to to bring it with me when i see you next. <laughs> um I stumbled into this and was not planning to get it, uh, you know, came across it. And I was like, oh, shit, that's that thing that everyone's talking about right now. I got the manga. 
<laughs> yeah, I got one I got of those hard... too. It's 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 a very strange book. <laughs> I haven't started reading it yet, but it's uh, it's this is the hardcover. So everyone's talking about the uh, the the paperback or the other cover, but this is the hardcover. Yeah, volume one. They're both hardcovers. That's just a different cover. Well, then I got the different cover. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but, know that uh, was yeah. a second cover. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, so no, that's that's what I picked up. I haven't started reading it yet. Like I said, I've never actually read a manga before. You got to read so it backwards. It's... That's gonna be fun. <laughs> I, I mentioned this on uh, Twitter and in, in our Discord. Um, but uh, years ago, our friend uh, the Duggernaut gave me some G one boxes, just empty boxes he had lying around, and uh, I, it's been a. I didn't even have the figures for them at the time, but it's been a, a, a project of mine to kind of get the figures and get the uh, the repro bubbles for them as well. So this is G one ransack. Now in a box and a repro bubble in there. So, and this is G1 Barrage. Uh, again, also repro bubble, complete figure. Everything's all complete now on these things. But yeah, this entire project started with the Duggernaut just kind of handing me some some loose boxes. And he's like, I can't use these things anymore. You want them? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have have those. And, uh, the last thing I have, I know I'm, I'm, eh, whatever. <laughs> uh, the last thing I have is when I was looking for those boxes, I came across this thing. Is uh, and this is this is Combiner Wars Megatron that I have. It's got that add-on set on it that uh, was like forty-five dollars or something. So he he's got the big pair of shoes and and a bunch of the other you know, you know stuff for him. But uh, he's a fun little figure that I haven't messed with in a very long time. And I figured since I found him, I'm going to pull him out and kind of mess with him a bit. So, yeah, he's he's kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, just figured I'd bring him out and show him again. Combiner Wars Megatron really doesn't really hold up anymore as, a, as like, a good, you know, comparison to, to you know, say, a, a Masterpiece Megatron that I have sitting here. It was good for the time. He's very, he's very you know, chunky. His, his uh, you know, his arms are really not very emotive. He can't really do a whole heck of a lot, and he has no waist waist swivel or anything, so he's he's very static. Um, but for the time, a Combiner Wars Megatron, he was pretty damn good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I got for this week. I think that was the first Megatron to come with an Autobot sticker, like that you could an optional yes. Autobot sticker you could put that's on. That's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will uh, wrap things up then. Uh, so. Uh, like Daryl and Jeremy, I got some comics. Uh, Transformers Galaxies number five, the Cliff Jumper issue with Alex Milne art, the Alex Milne cover. Very nice. And then Transformers number 18 with the Umi Meow cover. Uh, and we're reviewing that this week in alt mode, so stay tuned for that in a couple of days. Uh, and then uh, last week was my birthday, so I got a couple of birthday presents. I did get the Transformers manga. This is the cover that I've seen. I didn't know there was another cover that Daryl Daryl had a fancy cover. I just have the regular cover here. Uh, uh, but I'm yeah, better I'd... than you, I guess. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but yeah, so my uh, my wife uh, picked this up for me. Uh, I did ask her for this, so uh, you know, thank you for picking this up but of course she always has to go the extra mile so she picked this up for me because i asked for it but then she picked up something else that i didn't ask for uh she got me the transformers visual history wow that's cool nice so this is is awesome yeah (laughs) so we interviewed jim Sorensen last year uh on the show to talk about this and, uh, you know, I, I said, wow, you got this for me. We interviewed him on the podcast. And he's like, yeah, I know. I heard that. That's why I picked it up for you. So thank you, honey. You're awesome. Again, proving that your wife is the only wife out of all of our wives that listens to the show. Yes. <laughs> it's fucking true, man. It's fucking true. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, all my stuff. So I think that'll wrap up Trips to the Store. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and we will move on to convention news. All right.
right, this is not going to be the normal happy, fun segment. <laughs> it usually is. Try saying uh, it while smiling. I'm trying. Okay. So uh, TFCon 2020, or TFCon Orlando 2020 has been canceled. It was inevitable, really, with everything else canceling. I mean, when Disney World cancels, it's pretty much writing on the wall that it's a serious thing and... I believe everyone is going to be getting refunds um, just automatically back to whatever you use to to pay for your, your tickets. So uh, I'm sure be patient. These things will take time, I am sure. With everything being canceled, it, it's going to take time for the money to, to get back. Credit cards are working in reverse now, and that's not what they were designed for. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and they're getting flooded, I'm sure. Be nice to the TFCon organizers. I mean, I think I, I've actually seen online, you know, so many people kind of posting understanding notes and stuff. And that, that's really awesome. And hopefully they are able to push this, you know, back to the fall or something like that, like Jim was mentioned earlier in the show. I will say Florida in the fall, really good. Uh, Florida in the summer, eh, not so good. So <laughs> get it in the fall where it's not humid and um, it's, probably warmer than wherever else you're from. But prior to the shutdown, uh, they did announce um, or an exclusive figure. Uh, this is from Ocular Max, and it is PS04P Azalea Protoform. And this is, uh, what was, I'm not sure what this was based off of. It's, they're saying it's like the Protoform version of Azalea. Uh, Charles, what's the G1 reference to this? Uh... Or is there one? <laughs> I, I'm I'm not aware of what. Uh, okay, what well, this it is might just be in the original color scheme. It's like pink. It was. Oranges. It was the original color scheme of the cartoon. How the fuck okay. do I know this? That was that was like the sketch colors that they used. Okay, so anyway, it looks good. Azalea, I think, is a pretty good figure. I, I'm sure that this will be available at uh, future conventions. Uh, one more thing about with TFCon, uh, Jimmer's. And Yoshi both referenced this on Trips to the Store this week. But uh, if you are a fan of commissioning art, this is a really tough time for artists because this is income that they were expecting and counting on and probably, you know, had worked into their budgets and stuff and losing a significant portion of their income. And some of them, it's not just TFCon. Some of them probably were doing other shows or planning on doing other shows that have also been canceled. Like Emerald city has been canceled. WonderCon has been canceled or postponed. So it, we have set up a page transmissionspodcast.com slash artists. We're collecting uh, information on um, artists on how to commission them to do, do work for you. And um, we're also asking if, if you are an artist or, you know, an artist, get them in touch with us to get that information. And we will, add it to the page. Um, we want to, you know, we, we've all, we're all collectors of the art and we want to um, just help. Uh, it's, it's a tough time, I, I'm sure. And, you know, we know comic freelancing is not, you know, the best paying gig. Just transmissionspodcast.com slash artists. Um, we are collecting. There, there's information on how to contact us there. And we have a good number right now, but I know there's more. And if you want something, contact these people. And, and, you know, some of these are fans. Some of these are professionals. But they all do, from what I've been able to tell, they all do pretty good art. and They all like know, money. And they all like money. It, you know, that that's universal. Right. With that, we, we do have a note here or a post here about WonderCon being postponed. Um, this was going to have a bunch of Transformers-related panels and – or, or last year they had a lot of Transformers panels, including a Cyberverse Season 2 preview. So it was it was with the Netflix thing, I think it would probably have had some previews there. But they have been postponed until a later date, and they are going to be processing refunds. San Diego Comic-Con is still tentatively scheduled for late July. We'll have to see. You know, hoping everything is kind of in a much better state by then. But... That is it for the, the sad state of con convention news. For what it's worth, uh, Emerald City, and I'm, I'm sure everybody's getting emails about this for, for whatever convention you were going to that got postponed, but Emerald City uh, had a page set up for uh, 
just transferring your tickets to their new date. And if you didn't, uh, if you didn't go through that process, then you just get a refund. Okay. Yeah, I'd forgotten they they did have a new date, and they're doing three days instead of four now, right? Right. So so for those people who bought four day tickets, you'll be reimbursed that one day. And uh, they're still trying to figure out because I don't again I don't know how other other conventions do it on Emerald City. Once you buy your tickets, then it puts you through another portal with uh, to buy a hotel with the convention rate. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out how to how to roll that over, or if you're just going to have to go through the process again. Yeah, I will say if you are having issues with like a hotel not wanting to refund, which it, it's dumb if they're not going to refund at this point. Go to your credit card company and just refute those charges. With uh, Dark Side of the Con, uh, they just rolled over everybody's hotel and ticket to the uh, to the new dates as well. Uh, oh, that's yeah. nice. Well, uh, that is it for convention news. All right, and we will finish up the show with some feedback. Thanks, Charles. And if you listening to this show would like to leave us some feedback, head on over to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. There you will be presented with a myriad of ways to contact us, whatever is most convenient for you, and let us know anything you want about this show we put out twice a week. Uh, this week, however, we're going to our voicemail. We have a voicemail from Donatrion John, and John says the following. Hey guys, John 4 x 11 good here again. Since you asked so nicely at the end of uh, your episode for some feedback from me, well, here we go. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, you guys had asked during the episode uh, if to bring some feedback on uh, the Unicron figure from Zeta Toys or whatever they're calling it. Uh, I'm driving, I'm not going to go back and try to read what it says. But anyhow, the... Uh, question the uh the question you guys had was uh do you like it or do you dislike it and i am a has hasbro unicron backer and i do uh actually like the idea it's coming out as far as i know uh there's only been uh now two molds of unicron uh one being the uh armada uh version of it which was uh, uh repainted or and re-released a, co- a couple of times and now the hasbro one so it gives more fans a chance to get get Unicron, and then Unicron was never a cheap figure to begin with. Uh, but I mean, it gives it a better better uh, you know an option for one, especially since you can't get uh, has the Hasbro one now. Uh, if you didn't back it begin begin with, you're probably not gonna get another one without shelling out a lot of money that you may not have. So anyhow. Uh, Hope to hear back from you guys later. Bye. What what John illustrates here is that Jeremy has built such a fantastic Transmissions Podcast website that even while driving, you can go to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback, hit voicemail, and leave us a message. So uh, I don't condone that, but good <laughs> job, Jeremy. Well, I'm just, we're using a service that works on mobile, so. And thanks for the feedback, John. Did you uh, did you want to add anything to that, Daryl? Uh, well, I mean, there is uh, there is some uh, at least well one more Unicron, maybe two, maybe three. But it, it's beside the point. Uh, Unicron figures that have been made. I mean, it's if you've if you've already bought the Haslab Unicron, getting into the the third party option, which apparently is around 300 bucks that's a hard sell right not only are you going to have two giant transformers they're also super expensive like that's that's a hard that's a hard sell but if you missed out on it uh the the haslab unicron one uh because a it's too big b it's too expensive and c you simply missed out on the 46 weeks of campaigning they did but i don't know but yeah, it's it's another option for you. So, yeah, I mean, it's it it's cool. I I I personally I like the design. I'm interested in it. I haven't you know decided whether I want to pull the trigger on it or not. But but uh, we'll see. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I'm personally I think I'm kind of waiting to see if uh, somebody from you know Big H is gonna step in and squash it. But uh, you never know. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty interesting to kind of watch the business side of things right now. All right. Anybody else have anything else to add? No. 
Cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you again, John. And if anybody listening to this show would like to leave us feedback, head on over to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. Pick an option. Leave us a message. We'll make sure Daryl reads it before anybody else. Back to you, Charles. All right. Well, that will do it for this episode of Transmissions. Again, we want to thank Jimmers for joining us this week. Uh, you could have met up with Jimmers at TFCon this weekend. Sadly, we won't be able to. But... You can pick up Respect the Prime, the vinyl, at distortionprod.com from Distortion Productions. Uh, Jimmers, anything else you want to plug or give your social media contacts or any uh, anything else on the internet you'd like to, to mention? Uh, yes, I would like to also mention that in addition to Respect the Prime, uh, I completed a new album recently under my Red Locust band. And... Uh, that new album has a street date of June 12th, the same street date that Electronic Saviors Volume 6 will be coming out on, which is the final box set I will be doing for uh, Electronic Saviors. There'll be more uh, releases under that name, just no more gigantic box sets. There'll be a Respect the Prime uh, Forged EP at some point in the future, hopefully for the fall TFCon. But uh, yeah, new Red Locust album, and uh, if, if uh, you're not familiar on Respect the Prime, I did the uh, Instruments of Destruction cover, and uh, um, you can uh, check out our new album. It's called um, Whom the Gods Wish to Ruin, They First Drive Mad, and uh, that'll be available on June 12th, but pre-orders all go out early, so... Um, I always break street date with uh, with pre-orders as sort of a thank you. Um, but uh, that is about it. And uh, sorry to not see you guys in uh, Orlando, but uh, most likely I'll see you in Toronto in uh, July. Nice. Half of us will be there. And thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, and I, I think we, we didn't mention it, but we should mention it, that uh, Electronic Saviors and Respect the Prime, those are all, all the proceeds from those go to uh, cancer research. Yes, and, and to this date, we have uh, raised uh, and donated over $75,000. Wow. Great. That's awesome. Couldn't get to the 100, huh? We uh, <laughs> we, should, we should hit the 100 with volume six. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Canadians. <laughs> we'll get there. You do if it? you if you change it to Canadian money. Yeah, yeah, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. Thank Jim. you. <laughs> so one thing, uh, one last thing, I forgot to mention it at the top of the show, but we st- uh, we do have a sale going on at our T Public store. That's at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. So uh, from today, March 18th, until March 22nd. Everything will be 35% off, and that means T-shirts are $13. And we've got brand new designs, uh, T-shirt designs, at the store. We've got our good guy and bad guy logos uh, as uh, new T-shirts and a new Transmissions logo that Jeremy whipped up that is an homage to the early 2000s Transformers logo. So all that stuff is on the our T public store at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop and everything right now for the next five days is 35% off there. So check it out. And with that, we will say goodbye. Good night. See you next time for transmissions. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See ya later. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of transmissions, but just because this episode is over, doesn't mean the transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions Podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Recording. I'm sorry, Mike, that I'm the reason you have six tracks this week. For a time, I considered sparing your wretched podcast of transmissions. <laughs> but now, you shall witness its dismemberment. 
Does someone have their TV on? <laughs> that is actually downstairs in my house. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> it's... Must be loud. Yeah. <laughs> is is that, is, do you want me to see if I could uh, turn that down? My mom. That's my mother. Hey, mom. I mean, I'm. I'm sh Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Try to talk to my friends. <laughs> I'm. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure Mike will be able to to work with that. But you hear that, Charles? <laughs> that's Mike swearing up a storm right now. <laughs> Hey, it's not someone playing with what? their toys. <laughs> <laughs> Ratchet joints and stuff. You know, it can't be worse than that. That would be All a right, good name go. for a Transformers bar. Ratchet's joint. That is at wow. least a $20 idea, idea. <laughs> Daryl. You, you need to run with that. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, well, that's it. Charles, why don't you close us out? All right, done. No, nope. Charles is on mute. Charles is not going to talk. That's fine. Sorry. Sorry. Here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. I was I was talking up a storm. <laughs> yeah. Can like Charles can if you click on Daryl does he get bigger for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Okay, wait, I got it. it... Happy birthday, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. Happy 75th birthday. <laughs>